I don't think uh, we are censoring students really. I think it's a boycott more than anything. So I don't want to, I don't want to just come out and seem like I'm pro censorship or anything. My my kind of uh, premise is that we don't we don't censor our students. We just boycott. So blurred lines is a boycott. You can bring it on your MP3 player, or you can listen to it pre drinks before you come to free tea. Um, and I think page three. That's a boycott. You can, I can think of so many shops just less than 100 metres away from campus, like Tesco, there's a newsagent by Bakery 164, there's the, like, there's the newsagents by the Fancy Dress Shop, and the newsagents by the Bessie by Engineering. There are so many places you can buy the sun, bring it onto campus, leave it on campus. We just choose not to sell it in essentials. It's not censorship, it's not a ban. We must remember that we're here to kind of represent our members, and we kind of have a liability to people who come into our union and to provide a safe space, which the union is. That's totally necessary for students who come into a new and kind of alienating environment. I know I was really scared during my fresh years, and I feel like it's really important that the union like protects its members. As, as the welfare officer, I would totally put um, any, any of the union or university's members first. If they feel uncomfortable on campus, like the SWP, the Socialist Workers Party, came onto campus the other day um, and made someone I know feel unsafe, then I don't want them on campus. I, I want all students to feel safe on campus. Of course I don't want to go around not letting anyone on campus, but I do feel like we definitely have a liability to our members that we must put first. We have to look after our most vulnerable students. Um, like SWP, I would not want them on campus. I wouldn't want Nick Griffin on campus. I feel like universities are a place to kind of um, develop and like think about things, but you can, you can watch it online and I feel like if, if a student will be intimidated by the presence of a hate speaker like Nick Griffin on campus, then I feel like we shouldn't provide that platform. We are there to look after our students and our members. If someone comes to free tea and they hear blurred lines and it could trigger them and just, I just don't think it's worth putting our students at risk so someone can hear a, hear a song on a night out really. I just don't think the risk is worth it. The first thing I'd like to say because I've actually been looking at the Facebook group for this event quite a lot and a lot of the people that have been against the motion have made quite a lot of accusations. One of the biggest accusations is that they keep on saying that if you're a conservative just come out and say because you know you obviously must be a conservative if you're in support of free speech. So the first thing I'd like to say is I'm not a conservative. I have been a Labour Party member since 2005. I voted Labour mostly my entire life. I'm actually fairly left wing. But therein lies one of the problems of this issue. So what if I was a Conservative and I supported this motion? We live in a country of free speech and democratic values where any person, regardless of what they think and feel, should be allowed to say what they feel and believe what they believe in, as long as it does not infringe or harm the liberty of another person. Now, personally, I believe that our university uh, representatives do not accurately reflect the student population. Personally, I believe they reflect uh, small, I don't want to say cultural elites, but you can sort of understand what I'm trying to say. It's a small elite minority of the students who feel that their ideas and their views are worth more than other people's. When they use the responses that have already been made about banning one thing, they can then turn it into banning something else. So one of the main reasons why we have freedom of speech is protection of all people, because we know that these things can swing either way, and it's horrible to be on the other side. We don't, want to, we don't want anyone to fall into the other side. So we protect freedom of speech to make sure that everybody has the right to say and feel as they choose. When it comes to freedom of speech, it's all about maturity. And I like to think that we are all decent, mature human beings. But if we're not mature human beings, and we do need to have things that are controlled and censored for us, then at what point do we say, right, who's mature enough to handle decisions and who isn't? Are we really saying that 90% of people need to be controlled by a small elite 10%? The job of the union shouldn't be to ban things, to create a safe space for small minority students. Leeds University has a policy of equality and discrimination. And they state in that policy that they want to create a safe and supportive and welcoming environment for visitors, people that use the union, for everybody here. And that their aim is for there to be no direct or indirect discrimination that occurs for anybody that's here. All of these actions follow a policy of equality. It's not an opinion, it's not a political stance by the university. They have a policy of equality and what they're attempting to do is make sure that students in any certain group, whether it be women, people of colour, disabled people, etc, etc, don't feel that they are being discriminated against. The Blurred Line song is widely considered offensive. It's triggering for some people. It's triggering for people that are um, that have been uh, survivors of sexual violence. 
it is about rape for some people. It's discriminatory for some people and it's oppressive for some people. And because of that, we have a duty to those people as women who feel discriminated against, just like any other person as anything who feels discriminated against, that they don't have to enter their union and feel that way. And the disadvantages of a person just simply not hearing this online night out are quite minimal in regards to another person. There's always going to be a disagreement on discrimination. Always. You know, there are people who don't find the N-word offensive if it's used in a jestful way. There are people that find it offensive if it's used in any concept all the time. There are, There is always a debate on what is offensive and what is not offensive in regards to discrimination. But what we need to be doing is listening to individuals' experiences. We're still in a time of discrimination of sexism, homophobia, age, age uh, ageism, transphobia, all these experiences, all these things are experienced continuously and as much as we fought for the freedom of speech, we've also fought for equality. From my perspective, two student unions clamping down on free speech is really nothing new since the passing of, as we've heard, the NUS is no platform policy in the 80s, which of course bans union affiliates from debating with members of what they deem to be extremist parties, a culture of banning boycotting and just plain censorship, I think has permeated and corrupted student politics and university life. And I think today it's pretty easy to be quite dismissive of it all really. I mean, as the bans have become more and more banal and their justifications all more flimsy, I mean recently we've seen the University of Derby Student Union attempt to ban the entirety of UKIP on the grounds that the burden of this you know, notoriously gaff-prone party posed a threat to student safety. Each of these campaigns, these bans, these policies undermine students <coughs> as intellectuals and political beings and essentially insist you will be protected like impressionable or maybe just easily frightened children. And it's all, of course, by small coteries of student campaigners and union officials who, despite having very little democratic mandate, seem to have somehow managed to rise above the pig ignorance of their peers. Because the truth is that when student unions try and ban a speaker, a newspaper, even a pop song, they're not challenging ideas, they're not helping to push for a more progressive society as we've heard, they're merely saying that you, the student body, are too fragile and too stupid to listen to those things. And any time someone tries to tell you otherwise, I think I would encourage you to marshal your own right to free speech and tell them where to go. I've talked to people and I've met people who are triggered by blurred lines, who it's incredibly difficult for them to hear it. It's, <coughs> it triggers trauma for them. Just to back up Georgia, there was a website which showed um, survivors of rape or sexual violence holding kind of things they, that they heard from their attackers that correlated to lines in blurred lines. Mm -hmm. That shows there is, a, there is a direct relationship between certain lyrics in blurred lines and things that can trigger survivors of rape or sexual mm -hmm. violence. Um, of course you hear things about, as you say, people hearing something that um, reminds them of the instances in which they get, got raped, but the idea that this one song can come, somehow encapsulate that whole experience, not only for one person, but everyone, I find quite troubling. And even the idea of triggering in the first place, I see, slightly problematic. Really problematic. And what you then have to look at is why then this song. I mean, if it's so easy for one song to kind of sum up, and this is, to be honest, quite tame in comparison to things that have done as well in the charts, you have to look at why this particular song is done so badly. And the, the argument that's made in that case is not that it's triggering. It's the idea that it represents some sort of broader culture of misogyny. I'm not being hysterical for wanting to blow the crop blurred lines, which I think is a song that kind of perpetuates rape culture, whether you think that or not. It does. I'm sorry, but I know you want it. I've got something big enough to rip your ass into. Yeah, that perpetuates rape culture and violence towards women. I know that when I listen to a certain song, it's not going to cause me to go out and rape someone because I am a mature adult human being. Read, watching page three, as disgusting as it is, or well, watching, looking at page three, as disgusting as it is, is not going to cause someone to rape someone any more than playing a violent video game will cause someone to go out and murder someone or watching a violent film will cause someone to go out and murder someone because as human beings i like to believe that we are more mature than that blurred lines right i personally don't think it represents any kind of underlying rape culture i think it's an incredibly benign song i think you know it would take a kind of very advanced degree in semiotics to read into it to the idea that it represents that even if you do, right, even if you see it as this projection of this kind of like underlying endemic um, subjugation of women, what by just snuffing it out does that change? Does that change the opinion of all these, this rabble of men who all are just desperately out to impress women and think it's okay? Of course it does. What? There's absolutely nothing. Sorry, sorry. And I think that's the point I'm trying to make. It's almost just a failure of nerve on behalf of student politics and everyone else. It's as if there's no more battles that are left to be won. We can't win them anyway because we're all too vulnerable. So we might as well just shut ourselves off from it. That's the best we can do.
And I think that's a really depressing thing. I think I completely agree that um, blurred lines reinforces rape culture, but that's just an opinion, and it's not about enforcing an opinion about something. It's about it makes no difference to any of us if we don't hear blurred lines. It makes no difference to any of us if we can't buy the sun downstairs because we can buy it anywhere else. We can bring it here. It makes no difference. It, but it makes a difference to the people that are affected by that. It makes a difference to the people who feel discriminated against in that. It makes a difference to the people that have trauma in that. That hate that that feel that it's sexist and have a right to feel that way, it makes a difference to them. It's, this is not going to go so far that it's like, we're not shutting off free speech. You know, Robin Thicke is not affected by us not playing this song. He doesn't care. He still has millions of pounds. This is not about issues that we're getting, like things that we're taking that are going to go underground and go radical because we're banning them. It's, it's just about the union trying to listen to people's experiences. I think one of the main things about living in the adult world is that you have to realise at some point that the world is not made just for you and you can't shape the world only in your own image so you feel comfortable and nobody else because then of course that just ends up becoming reverse discrimination. If any student, if they want to, can come to the forums and say, I don't want this, mm. this sold anymore. Mm. It just happens that people chose issue with the sun. I don't know if I, I think the sun is vile for a whole multitude of reasons, but I don't know how I feel about family page three and I am feminist. But I feel like if students want to come to our forums and say I have a problem with this, they are more than welcome to and they will be listened to. And free speech, yeah, as I said before, we need these kind of poli policies in place so that people can exert their right to free speech. Some people are going to talk over other people. We see the same kind of, you know, white men on television all the time telling people what to think. I think we need these things so that other people who feel discriminated against can exert their right to free speech and yeah it is a right and that's why we need these kind of things and um, to answer your question it's not just offence it's oppression it's a structural thing uh, women are oppressed black people are oppressed disabled people are oppressed and LGBT people are oppressed it's not about offence it's not a simple question of I'm offended it's a, sim it's a thing of I'm oppressed it goes much deeper than just offence so that's how mm. I'm going to finish um, so we've heard a lot about safe spaces, we've heard a lot about safe space policies um, and while the other side of the panel say I'm not against any platform but I'm for safe spaces, it's something that I'm very briefly my challenge. Because in my mind safe space is even worse than no platform policy, right? No platform policy says that you can't hear the language of a racist organisation or, you know, blindly by it. That's essentially what logic is and that's why everyone here is dispensed with it, that's good. The thing about safe space policies is that it's words disconnected from their context, words in any situation can harm you. And this is the problem. University and adult life and politics is a, sometimes a risky business. You can feel offended, you can feel physically challenged. If anyone's been on a march or a protest, they'll realise that. It's only for engaging with that that you can genuinely be outward looking, change the world, and not just hem yourself in with a bunch of people who agree with you and you know, calm each other down. That's all it's about, okay? So that's what I'm coming down to. We've heard the comment at the back about um, you know, it's a very utopian idea that you can change someone's mind to support the UKIP, but of course a very benign party, but still, that's what I'm talking about. Any time, whether it's justified under safety, whether it's justified under making people feel better, you infringe on free speech, you're also eroding and telling those people that they don't have the capacity to do anything about the world that they disagree with. So that's why I urge you, overturn no platform, overturn safe space policies, never let another band get to one of these highly undemocratic student you know, union meetings, and any time someone tries to tell you that your speech should be restricted, they're telling you that you're not up to the world and you're not up to politics. So 